Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today we have three different applications which will allow you to replace a sky in more or less a click or two. Those applications are Luminar AI, On One Photo Raw 2022, and Photoshop. In today's video, I want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of this functionality in each of these three applications, as well as the differences between them. I mentioned at the top there are three different applications, Luminar AI, On One Photo Raw 2022, and Photoshop that will allow you to replace the sky in more or less a click or two. If there are any others that I'm not aware of, let me know in the comments below. We're going to start out with the application that came up with this functionality first. That is Luminar AI. I have this image here and I already replaced the sky in it. And I want to jump right to the weakness of this application. That is reflections. As you can see, it did add a reflection to the water, but you don't have any vertical control of that reflection. If I go down to the reflection section of this dialog box, you'll see there's two sliders. One is the reflection amount, and one is the water blur. Um, as it is now, you can see it, the reflection is just not lining up. It really needs to come closer to the camera to line up properly. It's not doing it. What I found as far as reflections are concerned when using Luminar AI, it works fine maybe half of the time, but the other half of the time you'll end up with something like this and there's nothing you could do about it. Now, beside that, as far as just replacing the sky, it really does a nice job and it works really well. Uh, first of all, we'll go to some of the uh, controls here. Sky orientation. You have two different ways you actually could do this, or different controls here, I should say. You have vertical position, right? You could So you can move it vertically, and you can see that the reflection moves with it, with it. And you can see there is the proper place where the reflection should go, right around there. But I can't get the top part to work with it, right? You also have the horizontal position. I could grab the slider there we go so we can move that left or right double click on a slider to reset it you also have this button here when you uh, click that button you'll get a gradient control so you could control the fade at the horizon line with those uh, two outside lines you also could just place it vertically and you also could tilt it as well I think I thought you could tilt it yeah you can or can you I'm not getting it to tilt I thought I could tilt it but not apparently not so you could just do that. Uh, when you're done with it, just click that button again and it goes away. Now that's sky orientation. You also have mask refinement. Now this all controls kind of where it's blending in, in this case with those trees. So you have a global control. You can see it's kind of making the trees a little look a little different where it's blending at the top. You could close gaps here with this. You could fix details. Now these are more subtle controls, but they do come in handy and they do actually work really well. Again, just double click on them to reset them. Scene relighting. Uh, I like this feature of Luminar AI because it really does affect the lighting of the scene. So you could relight it with the strength, relight saturation. Oops, if I grab a slider properly. And if there was a human in the shot and you need to relight them, that will work as well. Of course, this image does not. That scene relighting, we talked about the reflection and then sky adjustments. You could defocus the sky. You can see it's not affecting the reflection. You have to do that independently up here with water blur. And uh, you could add grain to the sky. You could add atmospheric haze to the sky. You could add warmth or coolness to the sky by moving the warp slider to the right, you make it warmer to left cooler and brightness, make it either brighter or not that bright. <laughs> okay, so those are the controls you have over the Sky AI filter in Luminar AI. Uh, again, this was the application that came up with at first. It works really well. It's just the reflections that you're gonna have an issue with. Now let's jump over to 
um, on one photo raw 2022 and let's talk about reflections right away again i have that same exact ocu drone sky in here and let's go down to this reflection section and you'll see there is a shift vertical slider so i can adjust the sky in the reflection with this so that is a strength now one thing i want to talk about just mention um let me move it down a little bit. You see how it's on the uh, roof of the, re the reflection of the roof of the building? There's no way to mask that out. You could try to get the mask and you could try to affect the mask itself by painting on that. It won't. The mask, um, if you try to remask the mask with a masking brush, it will only affect the sky. It won't affect down here. So if I get a masking brush and paint up here, I could paint it out up in the sky, but I can't paint it out in the reflection. But I can line this up so it, so it looks pretty good. All right, so that is the strength, I think, of On One Photo Raw 2022. That is the reflection. Now, one thing I, I failed to note on the Luminar 1, um, in sky orientation, you could flip it. So you can match the lighting. And you could do that in On One Photo Raw 2022 as well. This little button right here, you could flip it. Now, you have similar controls. They, you basically could do the same things to the sky in On One that you could do in Luminar as far as like shifting the horizon. You could um, affect the opacity. So if you want some of the original sky to come through, you could do that as well. And again, you could fade the edge. That's again, right around that horizon line. You could see how it's overlapping the trees now. Try to get it to come in a little better. Shift the edge. Again, if you need to reset a slider, just double click on it and you'll reset it to its default position. Scale, you can make it only bigger. You can't make it large, um, smaller. Uh, warmth, right, again to the, make it warmer to the right, cooler to the left. Brightness, haze, you could add haze. And with this, you could remove haze in On One Photo Raw 2022 as well. You can't remove haze with Luminar AI only here. Uh, blur amount, so you could blur that sky. Also, the blur angle. So if you have something in the background of your image, the original image that is blurry, and you need to blur the sky to match it, and you wanna try to match the kind of angle of the blur, you see how it's kind of changing the way the blur looks? You do that with blur angle. So that would come in handy. Uh, lighting, you turn that on, and you could see that there's off, there's on. See how it's affecting the original image. You could change the amount. You could also, the distance, so you could have it affect more towards the camera. You also could change the blend mode from multiply to screen. And if you're using screen, you can see it's not doing much here. You'd have to change the color of the swatch as well. I'm not gonna do that. But you could come in and mess, mess around with that as well. Most often, I think with most sky replacements, you're not even gonna worry about lighting. And then reflection we talked about, you have the two sliders, the amount, I didn't really talk about, but that's the amount. And then of course the shift vertical. So there's all the controls in On One Photo Raw 2022. Now let's do the same image in Photoshop. You see, I, I didn't pre set up, or I didn't set up this image. I don't have the sky in this image is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I have to do it. And we're gonna go up to edit. We're gonna go into sky replacement. And I happen to have that sky ready, and there it is. Now, the weakness right away with Photoshop is reflections. You, it doesn't do reflections at all. So you only could really use Photoshop um, for a straight-up sky replacement without a reflection. Other than that, it does a good job. Um, well, I found, though, of the three applications, this one lags the most. So you'll see when I move sliders, it takes a while for some of the sliders to kick in. Now, as far as flipping it, you could flip it horizontally like this. You can see how that's kind of slow. Uh, you could shift the edge. See, it's kind of it's kind of laggy, all right? Um, also, with Photoshop, there's no like double clicking to reset it at all. So you need to remember what number you were on or what number you may have liked. Uh, zero and 100, I think, are the default numbers. And then you could fade the edge. See, it, it takes a while. There'll be a little spinning wheel in the lower left-hand corner as it's kind of thinking. And sometimes it takes a while. Sky adjustments themselves, you can make it brighter and darker. And again, you can't reset it by double-clicking on it. Make it warmer to the right. 
cooler to left. Scale, you can make it smaller, but there's going to be little use to do that. I mean, why would you want to do that, right? Uh, you can make it larger. And again, no, you have to remember that 100 is the default there. Flip it. I talked about that, I think, right? You can flip that. Um, foreground adjustments. This is similar to on one. You have two lighting modes, uh, multiply and screen, and the adjustment itself. It's set a default to 72, at least for this image. Let's move it. See it change a little bit, maybe. Maybe not. Color adjustment, not really doing much. If you go to screen, there you could see. Maybe a little better. I don't know. Not much of a change there. And that's it. That's the adjustments you have in Photoshop. Now, as far as your output, reason why I didn't have this set up ahead of time is because um, I can't click to the second image over here that I want to show you in a minute while this is open. I have to commit to it. Once you commit to it, you can't come in, come back in and readjust anything. Even if you use a smart layer, a smart object, you won't be able to come back in and readjust any of these sliders. When you click OK, it's going to apply it, period. So there's nothing you could do to come in with and reset or redo anything. Whereas with the other two apps, you can. You can go back in and readjust stuff. So that is a weakness of the Photoshop one as well. Now as far as the output too, you have two choices. A duplicate layer, which basically is a one layer above your original layer. That is the image with the new sky in it, and that's it. You can't go in and readjust anything. The other one is new layers, and that will be all the layers. It's going to use a few different um, adjustment uh, layers, like, a, um, you know, I think curves it use and a couple others, and you'll see those, and you'll see the image with a mask, maybe two masks on it. Let's do that to start. I'll show you that. Just better if I show you. There you go. All right, we have a curves adjustment layer, and then um, we have the two versions of the image or two layers of the image with masking done on it. So that is that. It's baked in now. There's no way I could go back in and readjust anything. I mean, I could double click on the curves and adjust the curve. I could come in and paint on the mask if I need to, but I can't go back into that original dialog box and readjust anything. All right, now let's try a different image. This next image is going to show you a weakness of On One Photo Raw, because right now it looks like On One Photo Raw is the best in that it deals with reflections really well. But what you'll see is when there's a man-made structure in the image, it fails miserably. Uh, so I have this image. Obviously, we have a man-made structure. We have the lighthouse in here. I have another Occudrone sky in here. Uh, this is the original image. And there's the image with the Occudrone sky in it. Of course, this is Luminar AI. And I'm not going to go through all the adjustments again. And I didn't do any adjusting here. I just replaced the sky. And I, you know, I could relight it or I could affect the warmth. I could do things. But I just want to show you that Luminar AI deals with man-made structures wonderfully. It did a great job. On this image, if I was adjusting anything, I would adjust this horizon line a little bit. Um, just like the vertical position. I'm going to move it down a little bit so it covers a little more. I'd probably come into the mask refinement a little bit, try to get it to blend in a little better down in that closed gaps area. Maybe there it is. There it is. Now you can see that came in. So you could work real well with this. Works, works fine. Let's go over to On One Photo Raw uh, 2022. Again, I have the same exact image with the same exact Occudrone sky in it. And you'll see that it doesn't even see the man-made objects. And trust me, I'm not going to try to show you continually, but you can move these sliders all you want. You're not going to be able to get those buildings to come through properly. Now, you could try to mask it, but that to me is folly and it's going to be almost impossible. And what I mean by that is you would get the mask and you would try to paint out the adjustment, right? Up here, paint out. And you'd probably get a perfect brush as well. Turn that on. And then you could try to paint out everything here and uh, that's just not going to work trust me it's just going to be too difficult to do like it's covering up this covering up the antenna it's covering up everything and there's no sliders here that will help you refine that enough to make it look proper so 
on one does a great job with reflections, but if there's a man-made structure in the scene, it will ignore it. So hopefully they improve this. They come up with an update. Now, granted, this is the first iteration of on one sky replacement feature. So I'm sure they'll be updating it, improving it. As far as Luminar is concerned, it's been out, you know, well over a year. So they've had time to update it and improve it. So it should be better in that aspect. Where on or where Luminar falls short is reflections. Now let's go over to Photoshop. Now Photoshop falls short, obviously, in reflections because it doesn't do them at all. But how does it deal with a man-made uh, structure setting, getting, you know, jutting out into the scene? So again, we're going to go up to Edit, Sky Replacement. And we're going to, again, it's an Occhi-Jones Sky. It's going to put the last one I used in there. I don't want to use that one. Um, one, two, three, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm trying to think of which one it was. Was it eight? Yeah, that's it. Okay, um, did a good job, right? It, it has all the man-made structures are there. Um, so it did good. Now you could come in and you could shift edge and fade edge and things and try to get things to come in a little better around that horizon line. So that did okay. So Photoshop main weakness is that it doesn't do reflections at all. And its secondary weakness is it's kind of slow. It doesn't, you move a slider and it takes a while for it to um, do anything when you move a slider. Also, you can't just reset a slider by double clicking on it. So that is kind of annoying as well. And when you're commit to it, like as soon as I, now I did the other one, let me do duplicate layer on this one and show you the difference. You'll see you just get a duplicate layer. There's no way to go back in and readjust anything. So that's the weaknesses of Photoshop. Other than that, if you just need it to pop the sky, a new sky up into the sky area, it does a fine job. Now, on one Photo Raw 2022, on the other hand, its main weakness is structures, man-made structures. It's just going to, you know, obliterate them and go over the top of them. And I've tried this on a number of different images, just so you know. This isn't the only image I've tried this on. I have like a cityscape of Columbus, Ohio, cityscapes of Buffalo, cityscapes of New York City, a number, Toronto, I try and, and it, it fails every single time. So it doesn't see buildings for whatever reason. It works very well with reflections though. And finally, Luminar. Uh, main strength is it, it, overall it works great. It really does work great on all different images. It's the reflections. You cannot move the reflection vertically. And I found about half the time it's wrong and you need to move it vertically and it won't, you just can't do it. So hopefully they update that whenever Luminar Neo comes out and that feature is included in Luminar Neo because it would be, um, it would make it head and shoulders above the other two if it was able to do that. So let me know your opinions. Those of you that used maybe all three, possibly let me know your opinion. If you used one over the other and you found an issue that the one you use has that I didn't mention here, let me know in the comments below. And again, if there is a fourth or fifth application out there that will replace guys in a click or two, let me know that. And I want to check that, that app out. And that's it. That's everything. Thank you for watching my videos, everyone. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>